there is a wonderful story. While covering the Conservative Party campaign, I traveled with Churchill for several days. Here, I had some pictures where he was a little napping, a little dozing, until his son Randolph tapped him on the shoulder because they played the national anthem, God Save the King, and up he shot like a viper. And then I have to tell you a wonderful story of Lord Russell, or Bertrand Russell. When I came to him, I admired his stony face. He was absolutely immovable, like me, you know. I can also be like him, like this. People are frightened of me. I said, my God, how do you do it? And he said to me, a crocodile moves very slowly. I did a story once of the eminent American uh, painter Andrew Wyatt in Cushing, Maine. And this is what I found. You see, you see a drawing of him in the background, a Dalmatian dog on the bed and his famous head there. But I prayed, I prayed that the dog would disappear. I didn't want to chase the dog away. It came away and I could only take one picture because I had one film, and this is naturally the better picture. Much better than this. See the difference? Why is it better? Oh, it pleases me. I don't know why it pleases me. What pleases me, I like. I don't have to agree with you, but it pleases me. I think this is a better picture for me. Several years ago, I got an assignment to go to photograph Paris, which was called, uh, the editors gave me an assignment, they wanted to call it Eisenstadt's Paris, and I said, how awful is that assignment? Um, and uh, I said, this is a horrible uh, title for it. Anyway, so I went to Paris, and I went with an interpreter around, and any time, I raised my camera and said, Cartier Bresson has taken this, Conrad Kappa has taken this, uh, Ernst Haas has taken this, he has taken it, everybody has taken it. So there are only two possibilities. Either I go away or commit suicide. Let me do what I want to do, and I did. And it was a very successful story, it was called The Parisians. This was photographed in a puppet theater in the Tuileries. And after this picture was taken, I took some close-up, and this is this. I like this picture better because this is much more exciting because she screams out, my God, the dragon is slain. Very often, this is only a vision. I mean, just my brain is, is short-circuited. Only my, my, my eyes and my, my little finger react. Sunday afternoon of a typical Paris concierge and family. You know, I waited, I focused, waited quite some time, did this, you know, focused was done very fast, without that sound, the camera clicked. Mr. Eisenstedt, what do you think is the essential qualities for a photographer? Not a very uh, unobtrusive, he has to be unobtrusive, the, uh, the type of photograph I do, and to blend in with the people, and, uh, and have as little equipment as possible. And when people ask me, what are you doing? I say, I'm always an amateur. When you say you are from a magazine, you're dead. Always dead. An amateur. Innocent amateur. I started photograph yesterday. I was sent to... Uh, Pennsylvania station while the war was still going on and these are all uh, American uh, uh, military men saying goodbye to their sweethearts and wives at Pennsylvania station. These were all taken not with a Leica but a roller flex. You know, you know why with a roller flex? Because with the roller flex I could focus like this at that time with the old roller flex like this and hold it for minutes, like this. 
As he said, I talk to you like this and watch you and click there. See? Do this and watch you again, absolutely motionless, like a stone. They didn't know that I photographed them. But if I would do this, they would see me. What are you doing there? See? Like this, here like this. <laughs>